He's making his way straight for it. This guy is such a champion. Look at this. What's up, guys? It's a big day today because the Nudibranx came in. Here they are. So this is straight from Reef Town. This is my official Nudibranx provider. That's right, this is not my first time ordering. This is my second, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Hey, Charlie. Come on in, young Charlie. Oh no. Young Charlie, come on in. Good dog. Well, we're tending to this right away because it is freezing cold out in Utah right now. But last time I did this, I didn't lose a single Nudibranch. So, but we are gonna take a different approach this time with our Nudibranchs than we did last time, which I'll talk about here just in a little bit. Right now, let's get these guys open. All right, so we've just opened up the package. Here they are, the nudes, that is to say Nudibranx, the only nudes I would ever order. Here they are, the nudes. This order decided to cling together. Hopefully that means they're in the process of making some eggs or something like that. And then we've got one straggler though. He doesn't wanna participate in the festivities. There's the party pooper. So when you order from Reef Town, which I totally recommend by the way, I've had a really pleasant experience both times in ordering Nudibranchs from them. Uh, they will send you healthy Nudibranchs. You will receive a guarantee arrived alive on your order and these guys are absolutely pleasant to deal with uh, via email. You also get an email, but they also give you written instructions on how to acclimate, acclimate these things. Step one is to open up this jar right away. So I have not done that. Let's go ahead and do that. That's to make sure that the Nudibranx get oxygen. The reason they've done that is because they've taped it really tightly for the delivery. So let's go ahead and remove this lid here. Right, let's get this open. Great. All right, perfect. Okay, we're gonna let this sit here for a minute. Let's go ahead and talk about game plans here, our plan of attack. So the Aptasias in this tank have absolutely become a problem. Look how big those are. And we've got some on this LPS plug growing. I know that there's one really close to that Favia. There's one right in the middle of this colony of jungle juices. And then I know if we go around the side here, there's a really big one right here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, they're just all over. I have the lights off prepped for this tank because I do have a RAS in here. And when you put Bergias into your tank, it's a really good idea to A, make sure any predator fish are really well fed but B, it's a good idea to introduce these uh, Bergias at night. Since it is not nighttime and I'll be releasing them here during the day, I've just had the lights off since this morning. Now, coincidentally, uh, obviously if you've kept a reef before, you know that butterfly fish are another uh, potential solution to Aptasias. It's never worked for me though. Uh, whereas these Bergias I know will absolutely do the trick. But this is where we will be introducing the birdies of the tank, I'm actually going to introduce them right there, just right next to those Aptasias so that they can have meals for days. Um, because that Aptasia garden there is ruining my Zoa garden, which is coming in so nicely. Um, but there's a nice frag of orange oxides there, which uh, started out as being probably one of the bigger plugs in this entire garden, one of the bigger colonies. And because of the number of Aptasias here, uh, they have not grown at all. So we need those to come in. We're gonna be releasing the Bergias. And the good news is I see no signs of the six line wrasse here. So as I mentioned, this is my second order of Bergias. Um, and the reason for that, there's a little bit of a story to that. So this tank here actually has no Aptasias at all in the water column. It's almost suspicious. Like I wonder if there's something in here eating them all because I've just never seen a tank, especially a tank of this size have no Aptasias in it, but there are none. Whereas in the small tank, I was growing this Zoa garden, which I just showed you. And right as it was starting to take off, some Aptasias started appearing in some of my prized Zoa frags. And I really didn't want those Aptasias um, killing the Zoas. So I didn't waste any time, didn't try out any of the solutions that only work 50% of the time. I went straight for the proven way to reduce your Aptasias, to eliminate your Aptasias. Um, which are the Bergia Nudibranchs. So I ordered some Bergia Nudibranchs, and what I did was I actually released them into a Pico tank, and I took the uh, plugs of Zoas that had Aptasias on them and actually just put them in the Pico tank with 
the uh, with the nudibranchs. And that was great because there were no predators, nobody was bothering the nudibranchs, and it was really easy for the, the nudibranchs to find the aptasias. I didn't want to release the nudibranchs into my small tank, knowing that there was a wrasse in there, also knowing that 40 gallons is a lot of ground to cover, even for six medium-sized uh, nudibranchs. Didn't want to do that, so I ended up bringing the plugs to the Pico tank, and within three days, six nudibranchs, maybe it was five nudibranchs, just chowed down those aptasias. Absolutely eliminated the problem in three days. It was really exciting. What I did then was I, rele I put the plugs back in the living room tank, and then I released all of the nudibranchs in the back here. Because while the water column is completely clean, the back is full of aptasias, at least it used to be. But I released them back there, and I think they're doing their job. I noticed there's a lot fewer aptasias back there. In fact, they're almost gone but I can't find them. They're small, they're hard to find once you release them. And that's part of the reason, honestly, why I used the Pico tank and brought the affected zoas to my last order of nudibranchs in a small tank so I could watch what was happening, keep track of the aptasias being eaten, as well as know where my nudibranchs are at all times. That strategy has kind of backfired because within a week or two, I saw one aptasia, which became five, which had become about a dozen, which are starting to sting corals. So it's time to release the Krakens. It's time to release the Nudibranx into the living room tank. I'm here to document the whole thing for you. All right, so let's get back to these guys, the stars of the show. So they're starting to come alive. They're crawling around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend the next 30 minutes to an hour, slowly acclimate these guys before introducing them to the tank. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. We are going to introduce these guys to the tank. Now, the other instructions that Reeftown gives is not to dump these directly onto Aptasias, because if you do that, then the Aptasias can actually eat the Nudibranx, so, uh, which is a great way to introduce a Nudibranx to your tank, right? Instant death. So we're gonna avoid that. All right, so here we are. This is what I've done. I see that one has already made its way down the hungriest one the others remain up here on top but i trust that by the end of work these guys will make it to where the aptasias are at so so i know what you're thinking didn't we just get a package about a week ago yes we did um I did something bad, folks. Real bad. So it turns out I had to order some new Nudibranx. Guys, this needs to be the no judgment zone of this video. So I did order some Bergias, very healthy Bergias that I think would have done absolutely great in the tank. We got them all acclimated. We followed the right process. Then I put their cup in the tank close to the biggest, juiciest aptasias I could find in the tank. And hardly any of them were leaving the cup, so what I just decided to do was introduce those Bergias, those Nudibranx, right to the aptasias. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up taking one by one with the pipette and putting them just right on top of the biggest, juiciest aptasias I have in the tank. And the result was complete carnage. The Aptasias, because they were big and juicy, actually started eating the Nudibranx. And it was complete carnage, guys. The Aptasias grabbed the Nudibranx, they started ripping them to shreds. I don't know what I was thinking, but I think it was about the time when the Nudibranx started melting, and then these white strings started coming off each and every one of them in the tank. I realized I had just fed a $150 snack to the biggest, juiciest Aptasias in the tank. So I got my revenge by simply going to the local fish store, finding some epoxy and smothering those Aptasias in their place, just absolutely covering them. So this time I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna place them in the tank much further away from any large Aptasias and let them kind of find the Aptasias when they're ready. Let's let nature do its thing. Look, it's even got my name on it. These guys probably think I'm an idiot. They, they're like, ha, ha, two orders in a week. He must have fed his Aptasias, the Nudibranchs. He must have done it wrong. They're probably laughing at me. 
Okay, so this time I had to very carefully open the lid because they were all stuck to the bottom of it, but one, two, three, four, five healthy burgias, which is exactly what I ordered. Let's get them acclimated. All right, you guys, it's time. All acclimated, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the full cup in and kind of let them climb out again. Hopefully they'll climb out this time. This guy's the boldest one. He is already making his way onto the Aptasius. He's making his way down there. Oh, both of them are. I like that. Yeah, these guys have a good feeling. And they'll be in good shape. So we got these three. These two are definitely making their way down. These two are, oh, this guy is too. See, this is teamwork. The last bunch had a bunch of cowards. They uh, couldn't even get them to leave the cup. Yeah, see, this guy climbed all the way from up top and is making his way down. Oh, let's see. Let's see if he makes his way further to this Aptasia. That would be so clutch. Look at this. He's making his way straight for it. Touched it. Look at this. This shipment is paying for itself already. This guy, he's in the rock work. These two, they're already in there. See, look at these Aptasias. This is amazing. These guys are making their way to the rock work too. Oh, so good. Wish they'd come team up with this guy. All right, they're all in there. The last one just moved into that crevice. You can kind of see him moving around a little bit. So they are all in there. So let's check back in a week. All right, young reefers. So I'm here to provide my two week update since I let the second batch of Nudibranx into the tank. So just making our way over to the Zoa garden here. This is where I chose to release them as I was hoping that they would find the Aptasias that are preventing these colonies from growing. And as you can see, it looks much better than when I started. I do still have a few Aptasias, like in that purple hornet colony, the blue blueberry garden. If we make our way over here, this is really impressive. So anybody who's watched my channel knows that there used to be just a giant Aptasia, which sat right here. And within two nights, these guys went after that guy and he's just no longer there. And then making our way up here, there used to be my biggest Aptasia just right in this zone right here. And he's gone now. So they left a few little ones, but the biggest Aptasia is, is gone. So they actually, in about a week, found my largest Aptasia and got rid of that. It's interesting to me because there doesn't really seem to be much method to the madness here as far as what Aptasias they take out, which is both interesting and frustrating. Um, but most of the Aptasias in this area, in the sand, on the plugs, on the rock, are just gone now. And, and when I come down here at night, this is where I usually find them. And, uh, and, and every single night, by the way, I'll find at least one. And he's usually right in this area. I've seen up to four and they'll actually hang out in this little nook here where they'll actually try to breed and uh, kind of hang out together, and which is really cool. Um, but they do kind of hang out on this side of the tank, which means that in the same three week period, my infestation on this side of the tank is not great. Um, you'll notice that the uh, jungle juices are, you know, got tons of neighbors there. And then you'll also notice that my Grandmaster Krakatoas are, you know, pretty upset right now because there's just Aptasias all around their plug. So all in all, the tank is looking much better than when I started three weeks ago. But what I'm learning very quickly here is there's no way to sort of direct your Nudibranx to the right Aptasias or the Aptasias that you want to get rid of first. So it's true what they say, when you release Nudibranx into a tank like this, even a 40 gallon tank like this with a pretty good size infestation of Aptasias, this is something that takes months. You hope they can mow down as many Aptasias as they can on their own, but then you also have to wait for those guys to breed in a tank like this, um, which they're very fast breeders. Nudibranx can lay eggs daily they can reproduce daily, which means your nudibranch population can increase exponentially over time, which is encouraging. 
However, when you have a mature tank like this, it turns out you likely have a ton of predators that will not only eat your live nudibranchs, but will also go after your eggs. So I have one six line wrasse in here who doesn't really do much hunting at night, which is why my nudibranchs can do a lot of damage at night. But I also have tons of amphipods and it turns out amphipods will eat the eggs. So I'm not even sure if any of my eggs have hatched. Uh, most of the nudibranchs I'm seeing in my tank are very big now, very brown, which means that they're eating. Brown, big nudibranchs means that your nudibranchs are eating, are eating well. White nudibranchs and especially white nudibranchs that crawl out during the daytime usually means they're struggling to find food. Really, I think it's gonna take another couple of months before these aptasias, which are beginning to be problematic, are ultimately gone from my tank. As a review, I'm here to absolutely recommend Nudibranx as a safe, natural way to get rid of your aptasias. Um, but this is definitely a method that requires patience and isn't going to be as quick, as fast, as immediate as some of the other methods that are out there, like using Aptasia X or just epoxying uh, your Aptasia problem. That being said, I realize that those methods have their own risks as they can cause Aptasias to spore and create even more Aptasias. I actually think that that's kind of why this problem started to take off. I thought that I was good to handle my Aptasia problem on my own, and I think that just caused them to spore and just made my problem exponentially worse. All in all, what I'm learning is the quickest way to rid your tank of Aptasias is to try to bring your Aptasias into an isolated environment like a Pico tank and just let the birdias munch on your frags that have some Aptasia on it. That's the quickest way to get rid of the problem. I actually had pretty good success of getting rid of about six or seven Aptasias in a three day time by using that method. But as you can see, I've now gotten to the point where it would be impossible to put some of these larger live rock and corals into a Pico tank. I'm past that now, so I have to hope that these Aptasias can be devoured by naturally moving, naturally reproducing nudibranchs. That's all for today's videos, folks. Make sure that you like and subscribe. I'll probably be back here to provide more updates on this tank. Happy reefing out there. We'll see you next time.